Ready, Maddie? Mm -hmm. Look at my thumb. Little nice tag lift there. And keep watching, keep watching. Because you slept last night, buddy. I did. Yeah. Can you see my thumb? Yeah. Yeah. You don't see two? You just see one? Uh, <laughs> I see one. Okay, I mean. good. All right. And let's go up. And down. Good. Can you take your eyes and look up? Just take your eyes and look up at the ceiling for me. Okay, very good. Let's see you wiggle some fingers here. I don't like that. Why? Tap, tap. Mm -hmm. You don't like wiggling, huh? Mm -hmm. Or the eye stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, see? I don't even have to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You are such a pro. Mm -hmm. Good. And now switch hands. Mm -hmm. Little tremor. Very good. What's your pink bracelet for today? Breast What's cancer. This for? What is it for? Breast cancer. Breast cancer. Very nice. Okay. Let me give it a hand. The mom. So mom. Twi 20, his mom, 25 year survivor. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. You guys have gone through a lot of the family, huh? Yeah, really. Yeah. Let me this arm again. Okay, you ready to get up and walk and do more things that you don't like? Uh, yeah. Okay. You had something a little bit better on your exam today when I look back and see what we did before. Uh -huh. um, couple things. Are you ready? I'm ready. One is that you are making less movements with your face. Uh -huh. um, over time, you ha used to have more movements with your face. Uh -huh. You also, you do this from time to time when you're looking around from side to side, uh -huh. your eye has a little tremor in it, uh -huh. right? We call that nystagmus. It's less today, uh -huh. all right? It could be because you slept a little bit better, uh -huh. and that helps your nervous system stabilize a little bit more, right? All it's right. not fighting against something else like sleep deprivation. Oh, yeah. But it could be, we don't know yet, it could uh -huh. be the medicine that you're taking, right? Oh, it could yeah. be the drug that you're on. But and when, so I watch time will TV, tell. when I watch TV, I, it's hard for me sometimes. It's hard for you because you're seeing double? Or, no, I'm not seeing double. Or just, you see the I, object shaking? I, I can see it fine, but it's... It, it, I just blink a lot. Okay. You blink a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see a lot of blinking today either. But when I talk about seeing less facial movements, uh -huh. right, that's part of your disease because of where, you know, the surf one is in your where brain. The, where the, where my, uh, my, uh, my apathy is. Exactly. But, but also, you don't just have mitochondrial myopathy, which okay. means in your muscles, right, causing right. weakness. Some of it's in your brain, oh, yeah. right? And it causes things like balance problems, abnormal facial movements, uh -huh. and this movement that you have in your eye. Oh, yeah. um, but when I look back and see a couple months ago, what kind of things I said, uh -huh. for instance, even your speech. Your speech is really clear. Uh -huh. I can understand everything you're saying. Uh -huh. And I don't know if other people are starting to notice that your speech is better. I don't know if there are. Yeah. Do you think so, Josh? Well. You think it's, are you teasing me? I like getting teased, yeah. Especially by you guys, I'll take it anytime. So, yeah. But I, I'm thinking that there are some things that are improving, right? And my job is to document what I see um, on your exam every time you come and to see if we can see if anything's getting better or worse. Mito is hard because this is what Mito does, right? You guys know this better than I do. You might have some good days and some bad days. Some good days and some bad days. Yeah. So anytime you come and I'm kind of clocking you in, I just don't know, is this a good day? Is this a bad day? Right. Is drug working? Is not drug working? But this is why you have to come so often. Mm -hmm. So we can really try to get a sense of, mm -hmm. are we doing anything good with this drug? Mm -hmm. Or is this just mito and the mito ups and downs, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but I, it's always good for me when I can tell you I see some improvements on exam. That's good right? for me too. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay. And it sounds like uh, your dad's noticing some improvements, and hopefully your friends are noticing some improvements, and hopefully you will start noticing some improvements. But the sleep is going to help. Uh, yeah, yeah. The more sleep I get, the normal, normal Absolutely. sleep. Absolutely. If I could do one thing for you, it would be to help you fix your sleep and have you get a good night's sleep, because it's just like my iPhone, right? Mm. I can't 
have my iPhone when I go to bed at night. My iPhone's down to 20%. I don't plug it in overnight. What do I think is going to happen? <laughs> it's not going to be recharged for the next morning, uh -huh. right? So your sleep is your opportunity to recharge your mitochondria. Right. It's precious. It should be the one thing that you are focusing on the most okay. if you can. So I really, I don't know what else we can do, but that sleep so has sleep to be sacred. Num number one. Sleep is number one right now, absolutely. And uh -huh. we'll see, maybe we'll start some magnesium and the magnesium will help a little bit at night. Okay. But whatever you have to do, right? Mm -hmm. So no caffeine in the evening, right? Create a special bedtime routine, right. right? Tell your body like, hey, it is time to start shutting down. We're gonna shut down here and get uh -huh. ready for bed and make it as comfortable I, I do, as you can. I do have a, have a, have a, uh, a, a routine. Yeah. I try to be in, I take my meds around 11, mm -hmm. and then I try to be in bed by 12, mm -hmm. and then I, right before I go to bed, I take the melatonin, mm -hmm. and then it takes me about, I don't want a bad day, three or four hours. Yeah. Do you ever get tired before all of this? Because this sounds pretty late at night to me, right? 11, midnight. Uh -huh. Do you ever get tired earlier, like 9, 9 to 10 p.m.? Uh, a little bit. But. Yeah. So here's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Are you missing your window of opportunity to go to sleep? And then if you don't go to sleep between nine and 10, when you start feeling, when you first start feeling tired, mm -hmm. you get a second wind. And then all of a sudden you're up for a few more hours right. or longer. Right. So you may want to really start thinking, just start noticing. I wonder what time I start getting tired. You don't have right. to do anything about it yet. Just notice naturally what is happening. Oh, yeah. And then you may very you may want to say, you know what? Forget this 11 p.m. thing. I'm moving my meds to 9. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my melatonin right then or a little bit after and I'm going to I'm taking advantage of my body's natural time to get sleepy. Mm -hmm. Because you may be missing that window and then you have to, you know, fight it. Cuz once right. we get a second wind, forget it. You're then in bed 2, 3 in the morning. Right. Waiting for something to happen, right? right? And your body's right. like, yeah, you you should have done this a few hours ago. <laughs> so start just start noticing when you start feeling sleepy, mm -hmm. and then let's see if we can move your bedtime to that natural period. That yeah. makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Add out of the way, huh? Good. And look up at the ceiling. Good. Okay. Fingers, please. Trying harder with that left hand. I can well. So sometimes when people try harder, it shakes more, and I feel like you're trying to get more control over it. I don't know. All right, let's do this hand first. Feel the tone over here, which is normal. Okay. You're totally relaxed, right? Fine. You're you're fine. Don't try too hard. <laughs> Let it come natural. As natural as it can feel. Somebody just coming up to you, grabbing your arm and wiggling it around, right? <laughs> It's less at the elbow, a little bit at the wrist. And then I know your fingers are the, the hard part here, right? Open up your hand all the way for me. Good, okay, now just relax it. I feel like when you're at rest, I almost feel like everything feels good. And then it's when you try to use it that the tone really kicks in, is yeah. that true? Right? Yeah. So right now it's okay, but if I say wiggle your fingers, all of a sudden your finger, fingers feel more... I mean, sometimes at rest it hurts, but not. Yeah. it's more, more when I try to use it. More when you try to use it, yeah. right? So like a movement-induced dystonia kind yeah. of thing. Wiggle your fingers again for me, sure. over here. Do this hand. I know that guy works. <laughs> all right, very good, very good. Okay, let me see you walk, please, up one down. Mm-hmm. I know you can't stop. It's probably a 40-year-old habit, right? One foot right in front of the other. 
Who's 40? I don't know anything about <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm not drunk. Um, you can tandem today. Put your feet together. Close your eyes. All right, and last thing for you, if you can do that, this in the boots. Open your eyes. Try to walk on the outside of your boots. It's hard for me to do that. Yeah. Okay, very good, Josh. You can sit down. Good job. When we think about Parkinson's disease and Lee syndrome, there is some overlap right? Because we're talking about some similar areas in the brain. And so you might see people with Parkinson's that have a tremor. Well, you guys have a little, you know, especially Maddie has a little bit of a tremor. Um, sometimes when people with Parkinson's walk, they're very unsteady. They shuffle a little bit. They have trouble turning. They have to turn like this. But the number one thing that I see in my, some of my patients with Lee syndrome that is really similar to Parkinson's is what we call masked face heat. Like, like you're wearing a mask, meaning you don't show a lot of emotion, right? So you're not smiling. Other people, you know, when we are in conversation with people, like if we're joking around and I smile and you smile, we're like, oh yeah, we're all enjoying this joke together. If you're talking to somebody and you're not even smiling, people are like, they're not even reacting, right? So even if you're feeling happy inside, when you can't show it, it makes it harder to have that relationship with other people. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the condition is having a face that doesn't show a lot of emotion. I bet you they'd be pretty good at poker though. Yeah, oh you'd be very good at poker. Mm -hmm. This is this is the classic po poker face, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's in it's interesting. And what what I will do sometimes as a doctor is I say, Well, what drugs are good for Parkinson's disease? Let's pull them over. Let's borrow them and see if they work on some of the symptoms of Lee syndrome. And sometimes that. So we have symptoms of Parkinson's. It's not. I wouldn't say it's a type of Parkinson's. Uh, but what I will say is that we know certain area in the brain that Parkinson's disease affects, mm -hmm. especially a, something in the midbrain called the substantia nigra. It's black, so it's named substantia nigra, and that's where all of our dopamine gets produced. And in Parkinson's disease that area gets affected, it stops making dopamine. And mm -hmm. so the drugs are to help replace dopamine. Mm -hmm. And same thing can happen in Lee syndrome, right? So we talk about dystonia, Josh, right? Yeah. So dystonia, like what they describe in Parkinson's is a lead pipe rigidity, right? So an arm that's just, mm, right? Mm -hmm. Very high tone, hard to move. Well, if that's from Lee syndrome, having an injury in the brain, also destroying the dopamine center, mm -hmm. well, same drugs, right? So the things that can help rigidity and dystonia and Parkinson's can also sometimes help Lee syndrome. So Botox, another good example, right? Botox we use for Parkinson's when there's too much rigidity and dystonia, we can do the same thing in Lee syndrome. So in medicine, especially when you're dealing with the rare things, I always like making an analogy, like this disease reminds me of this other disease. Oh, how do we treat that other disease? Maybe those medicines will work for us here and we borrow them. Right? Sometimes people call that repurposing a little bit. Right? You repurpose a drug, you use it for a different thing. Um, and right now, in mitochondrial disease world, that's what a lot of people are looking into. Why invent a brand new drug? That's really hard and it's really expensive. Is there anything out there already that maybe we say, aha, this is working on mitochondria, let's bring it back, let's try to repurpose it to use for mito. Yeah. So, yeah, so there should be some hopefully some new drugs that will be d developed into clinical trials in the next year. And we're working on some of them here. So it'll be exciting. Yeah, cool.